What is up, guys? Welcome to the Dynasty Fan Podcast. We've got a good show for you today talking about our wide receivers, guys, our top 15 wide receivers. Today, we're going to be going over 6 through 10. If you haven't seen the 11 through 15 video, make sure to check it out, as well as my 1 through 5. That will be out a little bit later. All these guys I'm going to be showing you is going to be uh, rookie profiles that I made. I have only have the wide receiver so far. I only did 15, guys. I wanted to do more, but I couldn't. I cut it off on 15. As well as I want to try to do a top 10 running back before the NFL draft, I'm going to try my best to see if I could do it. It might not be as, as extensive as these wide receiver breakdowns, but I'm still going to try to do something for you guys, hopefully uh, before the NFL draft or maybe even Thursday night. So looking at it, guys, I'm going to start off with, and hopefully you saw the other video, so this won't be as confusing, but there's a lot of stats that are on this on this profile, guys, we got some PFF grades, contest catch percentage, they got dominator rating, contest uh, slot, how much percentage in the slot, how much they're playing out wide. So my wide receiver 10 right here, guys, I have Kayshawn Booty. And I know a lot of people are pretty much out on him. They're fading him. And I understand, guys, he didn't have uh, that impressive of a season right in 2021, 2022. But looking at Keishon Booty, guys, I definitely like the profile, right? He was an early breakout freshman year playing alongside Mr. Jamar Chase. So I like it, right? He had over 700 yards as a freshman, five touchdowns, and he just looked great, guys. If you look at the game film uh, from 2020 for Keishon Booty, that's why a lot of people really liked him. I was high on him back then, and he's just kind of underperformed. Only a couple, only 500 yards the next two seasons after that that he follows up. But he's an early declare, guys. He's coming out junior season. He's only 20 years old, right? About to be 21 pretty soon. Uh, so going into the NFL season, he'll only be 21. And he definitely, guys, he showed some crazy ability as a freshman. Right? I know he's had some injuries. He's had some surgeries on the ankle. So that was pretty much why his stock is dropping. But looking at some of these other guys, that are around him, right? In our rookie drafts, I just I just like the dart throw. You're going to be getting Keishon Booty probably. You, you're going to be getting him, I would say, probably like in the early third round. I mean, I don't mind taking a shot on, on a player like this with a profile like this. Like, would you be shocked if he ends up being good? I, I wouldn't be shocked, right, if he ends up um, turning it around and doing good and showing some some signs of life, right, early on in his NFL career. He's still, like I said, only young, got the size, got the athleticism. He's an explosive playmaker, man. Definitely yards after the catch ability. Like I said, if you watch some of his game film, he looked uninterested to you guys. I know he tried to transfer out of LSU um, his last year there. Those rumors of his transferring, and there was some off the field stuff and all that. But he just looked, if you look at some of the game film, guys, he just looked disinterested, to be honest, on a lot of plays. Didn't even look like he was running that hard out there. I, I don't know if there was some. Um, something going on with the quarterback or him or what, guys. I don't know, but he definitely, like I said, did not look like the same player. Or maybe it could be the injury, right? Maybe it could have been the injuries. So, but looking at it, this is a guy that I definitely would still not mind taking a shout out. Definitely versatile, guys. Can play inside, can play outside. But he did have the dip in production, like we said, from his freshman year, but still definitely, you know, he didn't live up to the hype and there's red flags. Right. I have right here in our summary, guys, it's worth noting that his most successful season also was when he was lined up on the outside 93%, which may be his best fit, right? I know they played him a little bit more in the slot, some of those other seasons. So maybe in the right fit, the right spot, the right position right now, uh, a year removed from surgery and all that, maybe we can show, maybe we can see signs of what Keishon Booty could be. So let's move on. Who knows what the draft capital is to either, guys? I have draft capital around fourth round, but he could go third, right? I wouldn't, he could sneak into the third round. So right now, when you're talking, all these guys are probably going to be like third, fourth round picks, right? The 11 through 15, maybe you get some second round picks, but right there, I'll take a shot at somebody that has shown glimpses that they are talented, right? And that they have definitely have some upside, definitely have some a higher ceiling than most, in my opinion. So I don't mind taking a shot on Keishon Booty. So my wide receiver 10, I didn't want to move him outside my wide receiver 10, even after the combine. I know uh, we were a little bit down him, right? We thought he, he said he was going to run like a 4-3 or something like that. Definitely did not. It was a 4-5 something. Still not bad for his size, but definitely wasn't was underwhelming, right? Not what we want to see. And the most concerning thing was the vertical, guys. It was like below 30 inches, his vertical. That was a little bit concerning, but we'll see. 
Verdict's still out on Keishon Booty, guys. We'll see, but I think he's going to be a good price for us either way in our dynasty draft. So wide receiver 10. Now moving on to number nine, guys. This is one of my favorite guys, Jonathan Mingo, right? Definitely been picking up steam right now, guys. And if you've seen him, he definitely he's going to be 22, 6, 2, 220. Got size, speed, physicality, a threat on all levels, guys. He can catch in traffic. Definitely breaks tackles. Good yards after catch. Good body control. Definitely good footwork for a big man. Some of the weaknesses, guys, I have here, limited production, right? He only had one year, really, one season, over 800 yards. He hasn't really done much. And then also the catch percentage, maybe the separation, the health, the injury concerns. The other thing to note, though, guys, honestly, when I watched some of that 2021 film from Mingo or some of the older film, really, he didn't really get a shot, right? When you see Matt Corral highly tar- or heavily targeted Elijah Moore, if you watch that offense it seemed like it was just designed for elijah moore a lot and they did a lot of design plays where they just little quick draws and it was like eyes locked in on elijah on elijah moore so you can't really knock mingo for that in my opinion but definitely uh, i like him he's got he's a big physical receiver and if you're looking at all these guys really guys a lot of these players there's not really jonathan mingo types right there's not that many they're all pretty undersized so i don't mind jonathan mingo i like him right now We'll see what the what the draft capital is, but I've even seen him go up as high as round two in NFL drafts, right? And, and these are in mock drafts. So we'll see what the draft capital is going to be. But if he's in the second, third round, I don't mind putting him in my top 10. He's definitely showed flashes right of his upside when he's on the field. So like lack of production is a little bit concerning, like I said, but he was behind Elijah Moore. So definitely a physical receiver with size and speed. So I think he's worth the gamble. In our rookie drafts, we'll see where he starts landing uh, as our rookie drafts start going. So wide receiver nine for me is Mr. Jonathan Mingo. Now moving on, got wide receiver eight, we got Cedric Tillman, guys. So similar to Mingo, has got size. He's got the weight, got some strength for sure. You know what? Worth noting, guys, Jonathan Mingo, I think he was second in the bench press, in the reps for bench press. So just a fun little fact there. So looking on to Cedric Tillman, guys. Again, guys, another older prospect, almost 23 years old, right? Going to be 23 pretty soon. And one of the things with him, he's definitely got good ball skills, good focus catches in traffic. So this dude can catch in traffic, definitely a physical receiver, good ball tracking ability, body control. He's got good positioning, right? When the ball's on the way, he gets into good positions. So he had a thousand yard season in 2021 with 12 touchdowns. So dominating season his junior year. You like that. And then, but the senior year, guys, he got got hurt. So he missed pretty much most of the season, only played a few games early on. But he did pretty good to start that that season. So 16.9 yards reception per reception. Look at his target share there. He had 23.4% target share, yards per out run, 2.44. And looking at it, he played 82 87% in the slot, which was weird, right? You would think this big body receiver. So he's a big slot right now, right? That's where they had him playing. And he had 12.2% out wide. So Tillman didn't have his breakout season, guys, until he was pretty much a senior at Tennessee. He battled injuries throughout his college career. But when he's on the field, guys, he definitely showed that he could play, showed some promise, showed some upside, went over 1,000 yards. We'll see. He was he was well on his way to follow it up again his, junior, his senior season after suffering – uh, another injury. So Tillman, he's an interesting prospect for sure in this draft right now. I have him predicted draft capital, maybe at the third round, but he could go in the second, right? He could surprise us, right? There's a lot of smaller receivers. Maybe somebody wants to take a shot on a bigger guy. So right now my wide receiver eight. So the injury concerns guys, and also he was a fifth year senior. So that's a little bit concerning. And then he's got a limited route tree, right? He didn't, it was the Tennessee offense really wasn't too versatile. So we so based on what we've seen so far, still limited in the route sheet, but we'll see if he can develop that in the NFL level. And this is going to trigger some people, guys, if I show you my number seven, because a lot of people want this player over, they want Tillman over this player. And I understand why. But let me show you the next guy. We got back to back. We have Jalen Hyatt right here, wide receiver seven. If you want to put Cedric Tillman ahead of Hyatt, guys. I don't, but I don't mind at all. But Hyatt only 21 years old, guys. Six foot 176, definitely a burner, right? So he's got good speed, 
deep threat ability, reliable hands, good ball tracking. He got a good catch rate too. He's got re really long arms. Some of the stats, guys, he went for over 1,200 yards on only 67 catches, 15 touchdowns uh, his junior season. So I like Hyatt, guys. I know a lot of people are out on him. He's uh, with the weaknesses, obviously possible press, right? You've heard that he had a lot of free releases where he was just given like 10 yards and, but he'd still blow by guys. Right. So I think that's still impressive. So limited route tree, right. Ran a lot of deep routes, only one productive season. Right. And a lot of people, as a lot of people know, it was when Cedric Tillman pretty much got hurt, but you still, you still can't knock Hyatt for going out and balling out when you got the opportunity and I've seen some play. I've seen some draft capital guys. I've seen him go as high as the first round. So, if this guy goes in the first round, I've even seen him mock to Kansas City. I'm not saying that's going to happen, right? And some people still probably won't like him. But I think right now, with the speed he's got, he's still a little bit younger, and we're not sure if he even has. We're not even sure. I think what he's capable of, in my opinion, right? I think that there's. It's possible that he can go in and develop in the NFL and maybe even be used a little bit differently, not just as a deep threat, but maybe if he works on his route tree, can he develop in that area? I think so. I'm not I'm not totally out on him, guys. I wouldn't draft him like – I wouldn't draft Hyatt in my dynasty drafts. I wouldn't draft him like early round two, right, which is where some people take him. But a lot of people are fading him, guys, and I think he's going to be a value for us, right? A lot of people are fading him, and he's going to go – Probably you maybe even early third, late, maybe late second, early third. And if he gets first round draft capital, guys, I think that's gonna be crazy, right? That's similar to Kadarius Tony. A lot of people were out on Tony and he fell right to like the late second. And right now you can definitely cash in for a, a Tony for a late second, right? Still. So those first round receivers, then he went to another team, he still got a shot. So I think if Hyatt gets first round draft capital. I'm definitely going to be interested in how far he falls in drafts. Like I said, I'm not I'm not excited, overly excited. Like I want to get Jalen Hyatt on my fantasy rosters. But if he's a good value and he gets good draft capital, I don't mind taking a shot on Jalen Hyatt. So definitely he's going to see more press coverage, right, in the NFL. We're not sure if he can win like that. But it's not definitely a no either, right? So we'll see what happens with Mr. Jalen Hyatt. But right now, my wide receiver seven. And moving on, this guy is one of my favorite wide receivers, guys, in this draft. We have Mr. Marvin Mims from Oklahoma. Marvin Mims Jr., guys, 5'11", 183, only 21, barely turned 21, guys. So I definitely like that. He's still young. Over 1,000 yards receiving on 54 catches. So that's crazy, 20 yards per reception. And if you look at the other years, it's pretty much between all three of his seasons are like 20 to 22 yards per reception. That is crazy, 17.0 A dot. But he's definitely a good receiver, guys. He's got he's got good potential. In my opinion, I think he's got really good potential, a threat on all levels. He's, he's a good route runner as well, guys. And he's got good, obviously, the yak, the playmaking ability that he has, ball, deep ball tracking ability. And he's got elite speed, guys. Some of the weaknesses may be in, in press coverage as he is a little bit lighter and playing on the outside. But he played 30% of the slot, 68% on the outside. And he only had that one really massive season. But I like Marvin Mims. I think he's got good potential. Right now, he's my wide receiver six. Predicted draft capital, I have third round. But definitely interested to see where Marvin Mims falls in the NFL draft. So that is my six through 10 and be sure to check out my one through five right here.